Hi, I'm Misha here, and today we thought we would talk about the U.S. M3 submachine gun, caliber 45 ACP, often known as the grease gun. And we would like to take you to the range with this, except this is actually a display gun from IMA. Needed to do an order from them and Sometimes our little display guns are actually a lot of fun. This is made in Spain by Denix or Demix, whatever. It's all reproduction parts, but it is metal. And it's kind of a fun little thing. It has a working stock. It has the oiler here. Held on. Just got kind of the original style grip. Trigger moves. Detaching mag. Well, maybe. There we go. Actually, it's an original mag, just hollow. Removable barrel. This has a plastic plug in it to let you know it's a dummy gun, but other than that, it's got your basic iron sights. It's got the seam along the top because these are made with a stamped steel. And this was basically the American Sten gun. Beginning World War II, the U.S.'s standard issue submachine gun was the Thompson. It started off as the M1928A1, then the M1, then the M1A1. Each one was progressively cheaper and faster to manufacture, but was a Thompson, so therefore still pretty expensive. There was also the Rising M50 and M55, but yeah, they never really lived up. So the idea, kind of copying from the British, but also the Germans and the MP40, was to make an all-stamped steel, inexpensive, simple subgun. And uh, work would commence throughout 1942. And in December of that year, the M3 was first adopted and then put into production the following year in 1943 at General Motors Guide Lamp Division. So, you know, they made, well, guide lamps. <laughs> they made uh, lights for cars and things. And it was, it was a very straightforward submachine gun. Had an eight inch barrel, just under 30 inches long. The original gun was about 8.2 pounds unloaded. Remember, it's solid metal. It was a simple blowback, firing 45, fed from 30 round detaching mags. And that was kind of the initial problem and initial issues with this gun had to do with the mags because they were double stack, but single feed type, which are notorious for having problems. As you saw, it has a retracting wire stock, very simple, fixed, minimal adjustment, iron sights. Takes the same sling as an M1 carbine. Now the original M3 had an interesting way of cocking. Had a ratchet here. Like that. Your dust cover acted as your safety. When it was down, it would keep the bolt in whatever position. Of course, it was an open bolt gun. So. See, safe. That was kind of its only frill was the interesting kind of crank charging handle. 
It did have kind of a notch inside here for charging if needs be. So yeah, the idea was to mass produce the Dickens out of these and replace other sub guns. And this was going to be issued to pretty much vehicle drivers, air crews, tanks used them a lot. But the early ones did have issues. So it took them a while to really get them in the field. In fact, it wasn't until 1944 that the original M3 saw service in the front lines. And then at the end of that year, 1944, they would go to the M3A1, which was a slightly lightened version. It was a little under eight pounds. Mostly they did away with this crank system. They also went to a new pattern of stock that had a mag loader built in. And they went away from the oiler on the side to having an oiler or a well in the uh, pistol grip and a few other minor updates, mostly just more simplifications. But obviously by the time the M3A1 was introduced, the war was basically over. And uh, production would be halted at Guide Lamp in 1945. They would produce a little under 630,000 of the M3 with about 15,000 purpose-built M3A1s being turned out. So still actually quite a few uh, less than the Thompson. After the war, most of the M3s were updated to the A1 standard. And that would pretty much be it. They would start sometimes using the M9 flash hider clamping onto the barrel on these starting in the late 40s and into the Korean War in the 50s. And then in the 50s, Ithaca of shotgun fame would make about 30,000 more M3A1s for that war. And that would pretty much be the final production run, bringing the total to a little under 700,000. By this point, it was a simple gun. It was not select fire, but it had a slow RPM of about 500 rounds per minute. So very controllable and guys got pretty proficient with their grease guns. They started to pull these out of frontline service in the late 1950s. However, many would stay in reserve use or be given away to US allies or be kept in tanks throughout the 1980s. In fact, the grease gun, M3A1, was still being used in some tanks during the first Gulf War in 1991. In fact, a friend who served in tanks at the time said that they had two of these on board along with M16s and so on and so forth. But after the Gulf War, they started to pull the remaining M3 A1s out of service. And these were never really built to be repaired or updated. It was basically just use it till it breaks and then toss it type gun. Because there's really not much in here. You've got a big bolt, springs, a very basic trigger sear arrangement, a very basic buttstock, which yes, Jay comes out just like that. They actually did this. This could be used as a barrel wrench for disassembly. But yeah, I don't have a semi-auto grease gun. I may never because the parts kits are crazy expensive and believe it or not, they're actually not a very easy build to do properly. But this came up, I don't know, just having fun and uh, couldn't really find any reviews online about these. There's a few reviews on the IMA USA website, but other than that, no real mention of them, and eh, why not? It is a nice weighted metal gun. Good for display, maybe reenacting if you don't need a live fire gun. And as far as I know, illegal in every state, even Massachusetts and Connecticut and California and New York. <laughs> But anyway, just a fun little video. If you have display guns or whatever, we'd love to talk about them in the comments. Uh, I've had a few in the past. For example, they do an MP40 and an MP44. Otherwise, if you like this kind of stuff, we do have a playlist for actual firing 
conversions that might be of interest, including a Thompson. We greatly appreciate you tuning in. If you could, like, share, and subscribe. And also, if you'd like to help support the channel, please check out the link to our Patreon page. This is Misha, and we'll catch you very soon next time.